everyone, welcome to Watch It, Paint It. This video, I'm going to be, this is an intro into a series, a set of painting videos, but I dislike um, multi-part YouTube set video things, so I'm trying to make them as individual videos, but they, they go together, and I'm just going to show you here the rough idea of my plan, and I'm going to be painting up these two models, and this model is this one from the model box from this month, which is the Frostgrave Ghost Archipelago, <laughs> whatever that says. He's the little reptile fella, and he's going to be the competition for model box this month. They have a monthly competition, and you can paint up a guy and and, and enter it. And this one, this one's is Rocks the Fox from model box as well. So I've been waiting to paint him for ages. So that'll be in one video, and another video will be these ceramic pots, which are by Steve Barber Models, which I got in one of the model box. I'm going to use those on the on the base, and that'll be a video. And then finally, I've got these MDF laser cut bases by Game Envy, the guys that did the Hobby Holder and this Order of the Miniature. That'll be another video. I'll leave all the links in the description below to find these videos from this one. And we're finally, this is the third video in the set. And we're on to painting that model box competition model, this little reptile character I'm going to do. I'm just showing you the model here. As you can see, he's got this sort of little stand base thing. And if you've watched the previous videos, this won't be a surprise, but I want to mount it to one of these Game Envy model bases. So what I think I'm going to have to do is cut that little base off. So I'm going to try and do that using my Dremel. Uh, Hopefully you've got one of these right. This is a metal cutting disc. I guess you could do it with a hacksaw. I would also love if anybody knows a better way of doing this and can let me know in the comments below because I'm not sure this is the best way, but I really want to take him off the base. And having now done this, it's quite difficult actually, even with a Dremel. So I'm going to take off my watch just in case you don't know what's going to happen. I don't want to catch it on that metal cutting disc. And then don't forget, if you are doing this, make sure you've got some safety goggles. I'm going to be protecting my eyes because these I've had a disc sna snap before and hit my safety goggles right where my eye was. So be ultra careful, guys, if you are doing this. And then I'm just going to whiz through removing them from the base. Now, if you are actually doing this, with randomly copying me with the exact same model, I advise trying to take the whole thing off in one go. I cut the middle out here and it, I think it just made it harder to cut the rest and made the feet take a lot of the pressure at this point so I'm just going to go away and finish that off camera because it's a bit safer and here you go you can see completely removed that base and his feet is actually perfectly intact and all his toes are still there etc etc so very happy with that and it'll sit much flusher on the base now this model has no artwork anywhere. I scoured the internet for it, even to find somebody who's painted it difficult. Uh, now, luckily for me, I'm a massive fanboy of a Instagrammer, Paul Rigg, the Rigger X. Uh, he's on Instagram. He's a really, really fantastic artist. I approached him and asked if he could help me in this video, and he produced this artwork for me. Absolutely amazing. What a top bloke. If you've not if you're not following him, if you've not checked him out before, I'll leave some links in the description below to his social media areas. Definitely, definitely go and check out his Instagram, if nothing else, just for a massive thumbs up for helping me in this video. And you're going to get to see, for the first time, some custom cards for the games with this model. So, uh, you know, I get to play a really, really cool model in some games afterwards. Wow. At last, I've been banging on about that forever, but we're going to see it. Now, this is Model Box's competition for this month, as I have mentioned. So I'm going to try and paint quite carefully and very subtle sort of highlights. We're going to start with Cayman Green, and that's going to be for all of his skin, his face, hands, arms, feet, knees, that sort of thing. I also painted shins later, didn't notice that they're probably skin until later on. And then I'm going to use Imperial Blue, these colors are all by Vallejo, and they're all that game color that you can use as a primer. I haven't primed this. I would still advise if you can and should go go and use a spray primer. It's gonna it's gonna help. Just give it a light coat though. You don't want to obscure any of the details. If you're going to be entering the competition, you want this as good as you can get. It's also from a game, so there's a good chance you're watching this just because you play that game and want to know how to paint it. I'm gonna use magic blue for that centerpiece just adding a little bit of brightness then realizing i wasn't using my hobby holder gonna have to correct that that was really hard to paint i forget how like easy the hobby holder can make it and this is one model that you need it for in my in my opinion next i'm going to paint those those bits those wraps around his wrists in terracotta 
Uh, later I'm going to change that because I realise they probably aren't wraps and uh, and blind and Paul's art makes it look gold to me. So <laughs> I'll correct it later on. I'm going to use this earth colour by Vallejo. It's just a light brown. It's kind of like leather brown from the army painters, but I'm having to use all of Vallejo's here because as I mentioned, I didn't prime it. So I've got to stick to those game colours and that's the closest to what I like is leather brown. I'm then going to use Vallejo's leather brown, which is more like a deserty yellow leather brown and that's going to be to do those uh, straps that are on this lizard he's got a few on his arms a few on his legs that sort of thing i'm going to be using necromancer's cloak and i am going to use this knee this isn't this isn't game game color this shouldn't stick but it did so mm, whatever like some sometimes paints will stick it might come off later on and it'll be my own silly fault but i'm going to varnish it afterwards and hopefully that will hold the paint well in place i've never had any problems before but you know honestly prime it you'll just be in a better situation but i am entering that competition and i was avoiding having an extra layer of paint and removing any detail i would i would like to actually win one one time so hopefully hopefully this is the one right like the the paint might not even last but i'm going to do the whole cloak in this nice dark gray cloak trying to make him look like a sort of roguey assassin bone white is going to be for the feathers on his bow somebody's on his um arrow sorry somebody's told me the word is it fletching maybe it's fletching i've definitely been told before so shame on me for not remembering but i might have remembered it maybe that's the right word i'm going to use now i've got some paint on everything i'm going to be using chainmail silver that's the army painters one i just prefer their metallics to vallejo's anyway they seem to just take better i'm going to be painting on various parts of the, the metallics here so he's got lots of clasps on those straps he's got a few bits on his bow uh, he's got a few fasteners on his on that his bag and a strap down the front hammered copper that's by Vallejo, and i'm just going to be using that for the base for all the gold areas so now i've done those wrist straps and he's also got a couple around his ankles as well which should have been gold so i'm going to use this hammer copper as a base coat it's going to save me having to wash it i think it I've, I've taken that from Benson. I've stolen his idea. He does that quite a lot. And I really think it pays off quite well. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with it. So I'm going to be doing it as well. I'm going to use Blue Tone. That's the Blue Wash by Army Painter. And I'll just be applying that to all those blue areas. That Imperial Blue, the Magic Blue. I also use that Imperial Blue on his um, quiver. Yes, new word. High five myself. Uh, but yeah, just toning that down as well. Then I'm going to use Horde Shader. That's a green wash by the Army Painter that comes in that new green horde set. It's very similar to Plague Shader. If you've got that or any green wash, is going to have a similar effect. I'm going to be painting that on all of his skin, making sure it goes in all the recesses. And just carefully try not to get it on any of the other places. There's loads of straps. There's loads of little clasps and bracelets in the way. So just being extra careful. Survivor Shader, that's the black wash. And I'm going to put a little bit on any of the metals any of the browns as well that leather bag and i'm also going to paint all of his necromancer cloak in this so it'll hopefully run in the recesses it's going to make i'm going to paint it over the whole thing so i'm just going to darken it down even further but primarily i just want it to run in between all the folds on his cloak especially around the hooded area so we're on to highlighting next i'm going to just going to be going back to that base coat came in green i'm just going to be dabbing on this sort of got a textured scaled skin especially on his face it's really detailed it's really clear to see so i'm just painting in each section back of the scales adding a little blob of highlight to the middle and then for his limbs basically painting all of the bony bits so all his knuckles his elbows his kneecaps and his toes then i'm going to mix in a little bit of white it was about a quarter white 75 percent sort of thing came in green and then I'm just again just adding this is all very watered down so it's going to blend nicely and then just adding a, a, a dab of this to the center of all of the exact same places I've been, but it's a sort of thinner, narrower line of it all. And it's very watered down, so it's just going to build up on that highlight. Imperial Blue, just going to be going around all the places that I did at the beginning, which is most of his sort of top and skirt and the quiver on the back. And then same with Magic Blue, just highlighting the sort of center of this, I don't know what you call it, it's like the loiny cloth bit. And I'm also going to paint him on a belt so it looks like it's attached to something now. Then I'm going to use Vallejo's polished gold and just go around and paint the center of his bracelets. He's got some anklets as well, which you could just about reach. And then this trim around the bottom of his, of his skirt and that loincloth thing, also going to be painting that. 
and then I'm going to be doing gold on the the pommel, the butt of his little sort of Chris, I think it is, but it's more like a sword, isn't it? It's, it's between definitely not uh, taking that from somebody t telling me all about it on Patreon. Thank you, Thomas. Um, Chainmail silver is going to be out, and that's going to be to highlight up all those silvers we painted before, as well as the very center point of his Chris. And he's just going down there, and just making that look very realistic. Necromancer cloak, I'm going to just dry brush that over the original Necromancer cloak. Very, very lightly, there's next to none on this brush, and it's going to slowly build up, just make that look like the original base coat. Then I'm going to mix in some cold gray, about 50% with Necromancer cloak, just lightening that up, and even more lightly, just trying to catch all of the edges of his cloak. Each one of those folds just along the center of it, and that's just going to make that look super realistic, but keeping it really, really dark. I'm going to use Earth just to highlight up all of those leather straps again. They're sort of, they've got raised edges so it's, i guess i'm kind of edge highlighting and around the bag certainly doing the edges there and on the bow again the edges really stick out there so it's, it's basically edge highlighting as far as that earth color is concerned and then just painting on all those little grippy bits in the center of his bow next bit apologies couldn't really paint this i want to win the competition so i needed to get a lot closer and that's just his eye i went for some hot orange for the whole of his eyeball and then i gave him a, a horizontal stripe of uh, gold yellow moon yellow sun yellow any yellow will do and then i gave him a vertical pupil as well tried to make it quite snake like i'm not even sure if he is a snake what is this guy like he to me is a cross between a snake and a crocodile something like that he's some sort of reptile some sort of humanoid reptile so that's the painting done guys that was not a lot of time so i'll tell you all at the end it's uh, obviously hopefully you've seen the other videos now i've done the base separately and i've painted these pots separately and we're going to be putting it all together now if you've not seen those videos i there will be links in the description below to go and check those out i just painted them all individually because you never know what people are looking for on youtube and what you might stumble across and you might come in at any one of these but i've i've done a video for everything so you can go and check those out and this is the consolidation of them all into this this exact video i'm going to put it all together now i'm just taking my time arranging them on that base you, you'll have to do this by eye and work this sort of thing out yourself when you when you sort of you place scenery on a base just working out what the best alignment configuration is but also want to make sure i can see the model i'm not trying to obscure you know i just spent a long time i didn't it was very quick i painted i spent some time painting that model and I want to be able to see at least the best bits. Often you would use scenery to hide some of the worst bits, but I think I've done quite a good job with this, this crocker lizard. I'm very happy with him. So that's why I've gone for, oh, I'll lay down the big one so you can see as much of the model as possible. Put that one slightly on its side, and this one could be stood up, make it look like they've just been knocked during an adventure slash a battle, something like that. Put the, the lizard at the angle I'd like him at. So it's just faffing around and... You'll do this for any model you, you ever attach scenery to and attach your base. Then I'm just going to use some Loctite super glue. It's that gel one I've been using forever. I think it's finally running out, so I might have to get some new one. If you've got a recommendation for some better glue, do let me know in the comments below because I will be purchasing some soon. If you've got some glue you've heard super good and you'd like me to try it out, let me know and I'll, I'll give it a try for you all. So just a bit of glue on of each of his little feeties. And then we're just going to place him on the base. And as I mentioned, that dremeling, you know, I did manage to cut it fairly flat and then a little bit of um, filing down just to make sure they are flat. And he's sitting very flush to base. Fantastic. And then we're going to do just a little bit of glue on all the contact points where these pots were resting on the base. And I, I still need, I, I need some tweezers because this, look how big my hands are compared to these teeny tiny pots. This is ridiculously hard work. So, ugh. You know, it's, it's it's almost like I could, could just go and buy some because I mention this every time, but I just forget I don't often do basing. So it's not something that, you know, is in, in my mind enough, I guess. So uh, somebody keep reminding me every day. Somebody come on Discord and message me every day until I buy some tweezers for the next time I do this. So again, just laying that one down, just taking my time, putting it in, making sure those contact points are resting on the base, getting that nice and stuck. We'll just whiz through the final one because you've, you've got the, the point and you don't want to see me super glue my hand to it be careful with super glue that's it guys that's it. the all the pots and the little guy attached to the base for a final sort of detail touch i'm going to use that secret weapon paint that sewer water it was sorry i shouldn't say paint it's a it's a wash 
it's supposed to be a wash. I got this with uh, one of my acid drops. Um, never heard of Secret Weapon before that. And this is quite a cool wash. It's really dirty, liquidy. It, it dries like a bit glossy, so it's a little bit shiny as well. And I'm just going to squirt this directly into those pots. I'm going to try and make them look like they're filled with some liquid. I wasn't 100% sure. I couldn't remember the, quite the color. It's quite a greeny black. It looks quite murky, but you know, maybe the... The pots have just been out in the rainwater, just collected up loads of dirt and dirty water. You don't know how you don't know how long they've been there, but it's just nice to fill them with a liquid. I was attempt I did consider using sort of like glistening blood, maybe as red wine. Would that have worked? Anybody got any other suggestions for what you could have done with this? I'm sure there's lots of things I'd like to know. Yahoo! And we're finished. So I just wanted to take a minute, don't normally do this, but I've been banging on about this for ages, making custom cards. And I did most of it myself. I did get quite a bit of help from Austin, but I didn't just get him to do it. So let's have a look. We'll start with the fox. So uh, I, I haven't painted this on the channel. I'm well past the uh, competition date, but I loved this model when I first saw it and I wanted to play with it. I want it in a game. It didn't come with any artwork, so we've made some artwork for this, and I've produced a model, and I wanted the card so I could play in sort of my favourite games. And we've got a card for Massive Darkness, fairly standard. It's a sorcerer, a couple of skills, nothing spectacular, but it's rocks the model box fox with some artwork on the back as well. Pretty, pretty happy with that. Pretty happy with that. Not my printer's not the best, but higher quality printer would. Make that look good. And then also, you can play it in the zombie side. Oh, yeah. So I've got some interesting skills. I've not seen these combined before. But again, both sides looking nice, looks neat. I get more, more importantly, I get to play with one of my favorite models that I've seen this year. I just, I love that. And I like the paint job I've done. And then sticking with this video, as I mentioned at the start, we had Paul Rigg help Made me, made me some artwork, which means I get to do exactly the same with this. Can't find any artwork for this little reptile character anywhere. So I had to go and ask, and he's very, very kindly helped me produce it. And then we now have Rigger, little homage to him there, and some fantastic, I mean, look at that. It's like exactly the same, right? And it, again, it just means I get to play it in my favorite game, and I'm going to be so, so happy. So bear this in mind, you can make custom cards for these. The templates are online. They're a little bit difficult, tricksy to use, but you can do it. And you can use random custom miniatures that you wouldn't use in anything else and get to play them in any game you want, really. But the games I like most. There we go. As I mentioned, his social media links will be in the description below. Please do go check him out. Give him a follow on Instagram. What a great guy. Really, really appreciate the help. This is it, guys. If you, you might have already seen them spinning in one of the other previous videos, but this is how they look, and I'm chuffed to bits with these. I think they've come out really, really well. Fingers crossed, you know, might stand a chance of winning the competition. If you're here following along, you know what mine looks like. Go and crush me. Be happy with that as well. Let me know in the comments below if you've got model box, if you're entering the competition, if you find this tutorial useful for that. And let me know anything. Talk to me in the comments. Say something. Say hi. I, uh, I'm lonely. I'm really lonely. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the little sort of series. And if you didn't realize it was a series, as I've mentioned a few times, check the description below. Links to all the products, model box, asset drop, haul, pots, bases, game MV, scenery, models, the model that you can pick up both these models, etc., etc. All the links in the description below. Thanks again. 